Previously on Toys. Pause क्यों किया यार? Cash है bro. Four crore rupees. Nagpal, this is my dream baby, the Audi R8 V10 Plus. Two crores well spent, I'd say. What do you have in mind? A drag race. Bad boys and their toys. My weapon of mass destruction was the Audi R8 V10 Plus. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh my god! How? What? Why? This cat is certified wild! It is. And not only did I get it for less, I saved some money for the high octane fuel that I'm going to be putting in this car to go the distance. No, 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 no. It's Germany versus Great Britain. It is Autobots versus Decepticons. This is Ankit versus Bharat. This is as big as it gets. This V8 engine Come packs on. in more head turning sex appeal Come on. than the Audi can ever dream of. Come on, that's and Tony it, Stark right it there. It doesn't baby. matter. That is just fantasy. There is no Tony Stark, bro, and you've got to face it. Guys, it's time to look at the sexiest car your two crore rupees can buy. We are looking at the new Jaguar F Type R Coupe. Welcome to a brand new episode of Toys. Jaguar has a personal history with me. So when I was a kid, my father used to talk about the Jaguar S-Type. Now the early Jaguars used to have the leaping Jaguar in the front. It was a symbol of respect. This is the F-Type R. It produces 550 British horsepower. Despite being a super sports car, this car is actually very, very drivable. We have torque vectoring as a feature in this car. You also have adaptive exhaust systems. Also something that I'd like to call as the fuck you button. A big guy like me can get inside the driver's seat, have enough leg room and can basically go around that's what makes this car my favorite in this segment. This car is beautiful and I absolutely love it. Time to put Mr. Bengalaker in the passenger seat and take him for a ride of his life. So I'm getting finally inside the new Jaguar F Type R. I feel like I'm in a nice fancy car. I don't feel like I'm driving a truck that looks like a beast from the outside. Everything over here sort of resembles a luxury car versus a sports car, which you would see traditionally. The Jag does feel like a car put together by humans for humans uh, versus the Audi R8. I'm pretty sure this English beast can convert anyone. He's gonna love the F-Type R by the end of it. And I can bet on it. Mr. Nakpal. Okay, so I am probably a convert now. But what is all this rage? Why is she so angry? It all comes from the Jaguar lineage. I mean, Jaguar cars True. are designed for people who feel good to be bad. We get about 680 Newton meter of torque. Sweet. Which is super badass. This car is the ultimate villain's car. And you know villains, they're rich, they're big, they're powerful. They're reckless! So she screams like she's really angry, but what's causing all this anger? You need to see under the hood, Uncle. Happily. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cool. Badass hood. Hey, beautiful to near because my carbon fiber V10 just takes the cake. Everything in this beautiful little clean, no carbon fiber, no show off, <laughs> pure muscle, pure power inside the engine. I also would like to mention that my car does 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds. I can do it in approximately 3.5 to 4 seconds. 0 to 200 in 12.1 seconds, baby. This beautiful red machine does 0 to 200 in, wait for it, 11 point seven no. seconds. No, that's not possible. Yes! That's not possible. There's one more thing. Which is? 
no, 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 this, no. Mileage. Of course, we're in India. We have to talk about mileage. Let's go with the Kitna Audi. Deti hai? Kitna deti hai? How does okay, the so Audi fare here? In, in the city, I get about uh, three to four kilometers All per right. liter. Wow. This car gives me nine. No. Yes. No. Nine no way. kilometers per liter inside the city. Forget the highway. Would you like some tea? How do I refund my Audi, please? <laughs> <laughs> Someone please show me the way to the showroom. I'd like my change back. All right, so what do we have? We have a really fancy, geeked out German car and a really notorious British cat. Iron Man, Fast and Furious, Transporter, Taken, Hollywood, loves the Audi. The point is, Jaguar doesn't need Iron Man. You can see it's standing right behind me. It's getting all the attention. <laughs> it's because <laughs> of the fact that it is a Jaguar. It is supposed to be the badass car. You don't need to put it in every movie ever to make people want to buy it. The Audi R8 is a pretty looking car. I mean, it's not a bad car. It has been around for a longer period of Correct. time. Absolutely. The F-Type is relatively new. Correct. It is Jaguar's comeback. It is Jaguar trying to prove itself all over again. On toys, we like to be very logical and tactical. Think about cones. You know, traffic cones? Right. So think about those red and white cones. Okay. And think about chicanes. The singer? Not the singer. Okay, <laughs> Okay, like chicanes, chicanes. And slaloms. All right, what they do on the track. Yes. Okay, take my money. There's nothing more two motorhead gentlemen appreciate more than a slalom course. The idea is pretty simple. You have all these cones that you need to drive around. You need to finish the track in the fastest possible time. You drop a cone, you lose. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! What is this? Are we in a boat or a car? Okay, wow! We love how it controls this. Yeah, baby, yeah! Whoa, that was close. It's time to see if Ankit can put his money right next to his motor mouth. Okay, first. Off the ground. Second cone. Too close, too close, oh. too close. Ankit went super wide on the first one and couldn't recover by the second. His cone went down and he's out of the race. That was easy as pie and this one goes on the books for me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the show that we like to call The List. And today we are celebrating one of the most iconic pop culture icons, James Bond. But we're going to be talking about the best 10 James Bond gadgets that we want right now. The first one is an Omega Seamaster Professional watch from the 1995 movie GoldenEye. This was no regular watch. It had a laser cutter and of course, a remote detonator right there in the watch. Press a button, boom! What's the time? Boom! <laughs> At number 9, we are talking about the multi-touch surface table that was featured in Quantum of Solace. At the MI6 HQ, Judy Dench, who was Agent M at that time, was uh, using this to view all the data. Imagine you buy data and see all the villains ka to see how badass they are and what uh, their weak spot kya hai. And uh, from the surface table, automatically, because sub 1G, 2G, 3G, to kuch tha nahi, everything is getting relayed to Bond's cell phone in some remote island. How is that even possible? It's the MI6 network. Number 8 is a fantastic killer watch from the movie Live and Let Die. This was a Rolex submariner that basically had an electromagnet strong enough to deflect bullets. Not only could it in theory deflect bullets, but it also had a rotating bezel which was actually a saw that Bond used to escape from ropes that he was tied with. Just add some reverb please. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> At number seven, we are talking about a prototype plane. It was featured in this special Sean Connery movie from 1967 called You Only Live Twice, and Twice is the Only Way to Live. So, this was a fully equipped gyroplane for Bond because it had machine guns, rockets, flamethrowers, and everything. And they were also made later on for private citizens. So, you could go out and buy this plane. All right, and number six is a nifty little gadget from the 1995 Pierce Brosnan movie. Golden Eye. Absolutely, and I'm talking about an explosive pen that Q gives Bond to get out of a scrape once a while. Basically, four seconds ka isme fuse tha. One, two, three. Teen click ke baad, kaboom! 
click it three times to arm it and then click it three times to disarm it. And there was a whole scene in the movie where the villain was nervously clicking it and uh, that's what Brosnan used to escape his captors. And it had a full class for grenade with a two inch long fuse. Dude. So at number five and in the middle of our list is the Lotus Esprit which was featured in The Spy Who Loved Me. Which is not The Spy Who Shagged Me. Absolutely not. This car actually was the fact that this could actually go underwater and become a submarine. It also had wheels that would convert into wheel wells and uh, finally the car could actually come back up and uh, go back on land and drive away. On number four is a pair of sunglasses that Pierce Brosnan wears in The world is not enough. I should probably not sing. The movie came out in the year 1999 and as terrible as Ankit's singing is, it featured not one but actually two sunglasses, Ankit. The first one had a detonator in it, but the second one is what Ankit is really interested yes. in. Yes! Remember that casino scene? When Mr. Bond very sophisticatedly walks into the casino, has these glasses that he switches the X-ray mode on for and he can see everything. Basically, it's for discovering hidden arms and guns sure. and some other hidden assets. I think we should go to number three. At number three, we are talking about the Seiko G757 5020 smartwatch. In the year 1983, in the movie Octopussy, James Bond is wearing a wristwatch which is considered to be the first smartwatch ever because it live streams video directly from the Q branch Whoa. to his wrist. It's epic. On number two is an epic, epic, epic cell phone by Ericsson from Tomorrow Never Dies. It has a Sten gun, okay? It also obviously picks all possible locks. It does. It also was a flip open remote control for the BMW 750i, which was featured in that movie. This phone was later launched as the Ericsson R380, which was one of the first smartphones of that time, but it was first featured on the Bond movie. And you know the best part? The best buttons. There are physical buttons that go clickety-clack. This guy has something with buttons, man. So finally, it's time for number one. And at number one is the Aston Martin Vanquish with the invisibility cloak. What a mind-blowing car. But it's the cameras on the entire surface of the car that basically give it an invisibility cloak. It also had retractable tire spikes and rockets behind the headlights and a lot more rockets behind the license plate. Imagine Ankit if the red Jaguar F-Type R came with rear-mounted guns, wouldn't that be epic? Wow, that would be the F-Type R! <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, this was the end of our list. If you want more of these, you want to tell us what you want to hear and what top 10s you want, what are your favourites, leave them in the comment section below. James Bond, for me, it has to be Anil Kapoor. What? Yeah. Wasn't he James Bond? <laughs> anyway, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye. But Anil Kapoor should be James Bond. Why isn't there an Indian James Bond? Next time is the list with Bharat Nagpal. Didn't the British rule India? So Only Bharat Nagpal. Shouldn't technically be an Indian James Bond? Toys with Bharat. We can call him James Bond. Since bad is good, we decided to sip on some goodness. Goodness which is man's second best friend. Say hello to beer. Gadgets. Cars. Bikes. Babes. Games. Guns. And if you want to make your own mind, then you need to make your own mind. One thing is very necessary. Yeah, what he said, it's time for In Charge. Yes. So because Bharat is a teetotaler, I thought, why not bring him to the White Owl in Mumbai, which is a microbrewery where they brew some fantastic craft beer to try and understand the nuances of beer. So, this is the German Hefenweizen. This is our highest selling beer, which is having some bananas and cloves. So, banana on your nose. Yeah, very yeah. pronounced. It no. does not have any real banana. No real banana. All right. Wow. Yummy. Yummy. Yes. It is nice. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. actually quite uh, unbeer like, very non bitter. Why is that? So, because uh, I have usually. Uh, 
put a less hop in it. Less hops. Yeah. People who don't like beer, the bitter beers, go for this one. Correct. So next one is uh, Diablo. This is an Irish red ale. Yes. Just remember all these terms. I don't think so I'll remember an... anything by the end. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So we are looking at the mild roast caramel flavors in it. Okay. And, uh, I definitely smell a lot more hoppy uh, aroma in this. Yeah, because uh, the hops are a little bit more than compared Hefenweiser. to the Hefeweizen. Yes. Wow. This is definitely bitter compared to the previous Bitter -ish. one. Bitterish. Bitterish. Yeah, because you know he's Bitter. got six beers, and yeah. by the last one you will be like, oh. "Mummy, ये क्या मतलब you know काढ़ा पिला रहे काढ़ा." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So is there a direct correlation between the amount of hops mm -hmm. and the color of the brew? It depends on the malts. So and where does your malted barley come from? Germany. Oh wow. All right. What do we have next? Let's do the shadow, Devil's the chocolate shadow. beer. There's some chocolate malt in it. There is a uh, caramel. There's a lot of Pilsen malt. So when you have a sip, you get that creamy or uh, chocolatey. So out of the top three, I don't think this is going to be my favorite because I still like the Hefenweizen the most. All right, cool. Next beer. Next one. Yeah. So this is uh, a Munich Hell. This recipe Munich. was formed in 18th century. So the malt especially come from Munich. Wow. The yeast has come from Germany. I really like this. I think there's also a little bit of. I mean, I don't know. There's of course there's a hops. carbonation there's no, in all of them. You get that tingling taste. Yeah, the tingling taste. It's because of the characteristics of this. It's thing. very nice. Yeah. What's it called? It's called uh, Outlander. Outlander. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so far, out of the four beers that we've had, I like the Hefenweizer. It has to be the Outlander for me. I totally imagine drunk Sunday afternoons with jugs of this. So the next beer is the torpedo. 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 torpedo Straight yeah. out of James Bond's Q Lab. Yeah. This is named after because uh, we wow. put a lot of hops in it. This okay. is fruity. This, this very is fruity. fruity. This is fruity. Oh wow! This is so flavorful. I wish I could find the right word for it. There's like there's a hop bomb. Inside. Yeah, so it it's an orchestra of flavors in the mouth. It's. I don't think you like it. I don't like it. Yeah, because you know, for non-drinkers, the hops do get overwhelming. Uh, but for people who are regular beer drinkers, they will appreciate the hop bomb, like Mehul is calling it. Yes. All right. Cool. And so we've had five so far. I think we've got one more to go. Yes, and that is the uh, French apple cider. Okay. Apple ciders are easier for non-drinkers to have, yeah. and uh, they're lighter to look at color comparatively, and uh, relatively non-hoppy. No, no. Let's see if it makes him hop. <laughs> hop, hop, hop. Get the apple aroma and uh, oh yes, mm. yeah, it's like apple juice with beer somewhere. <laughs> Some, yeah, it's okay. it's yummy. I mean, if you like ciders, you'll love the one they make it here. It's very easy going for non-beer drinkers like uh, you are. You like what we have in Weizen, so this <laughs> is for you. All right, six beers down. Bharat Nagpal, what's your favorite? The Hefenweizer for sure, and he's definitely wiser with that. For me, it has to be the Outlander. I love. The flavors that are coming out. What's yours? It's the torpedo, the hop bomb. The hop bomb. Yes. Awesome. So to our brand new beer wisdom. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers and bottoms up. I like big butts and I can't lie. lie. Oh, boy. But. <laughs> Now we had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. So gentlemen, and especially ladies, it's time for another this day, that year. We're talking about 16 November, 1876. Thomas Edison, unke technicians ke saath, they were working on improving their telegraphic equipment for the first time ever. Thomas Edison recorded and played back what would become the first ever audio message. And the message was pretty simple. It was from a nursery rhyme. It was Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Well, it was not that long or that soulful, Poetry. but <laughs> this was an iconic message to be recorded at that time. It was the first ever message to be recorded and played back. Of course, also Isi Sal, in 1876, mein, a mind-blowing German scientist called Emil Berliner discovered a brand new way of recording things on a flat disc and would then spur the gramophone revolution. Or wicked, 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 the DJ revolution. Na Emil Berliner, hote, na Thomas Edison, hote, na Anaconda, hota, or na Nicki Minaj, hote, or na wo Tashreef. Hote. The backside. 
the derriere. I like big bust and I can not laugh. Oh. See you later, guys. Yeah. This day that year. Right, Bharat Nagpal. I'd say not a bad day, huh? We not started day, toys with a simple objective to make better men out of today's youth. We did, yeah. And with that, boys and girls, it's time to call it a day. But before we go, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the share button so that we can bring you more of this content. And I'd love to know in the comment section what is it that you want to see next in the coming episodes of Toys. What cars, what gadgets, what better company? Well, you can't escape this. <laughs> Until we see you next time, guys. This is me and Ankit signing off. Don't forget, never ever drink and drive. See you later, guys.